Hello everyone, my name is Clemens Christoph and I will present to you our work on self-sensing feedback control of an electrohydraulic robotic shoulder. We are from the Soft Robotics Lab at ETH Zurich and we develop soft and compliant robots that are more flexible and adaptive to traditional rigid robots. One of our strategies to develop such systems is to get inspired by nature. In fact, for this work we looked at a human shoulder, which is the most complex and flexible joint in the human body. It enables us to do all sorts of complex tasks like playing tennis and swimming. The core component is a glenohumeral joint, which is a ball and socket that allows multiple degrees of freedom in a single joint. The joint is controlled by soft muscles that have proprioceptive feedback, meaning we as humans know where our arm is without even looking at it, which lets us control our arm very efficiently without any external sensors. So how does the state of the art accommodate those two distinct features? Well, there have been efforts to integrate multiple degrees of freedom in one joint, like for example the Benix active ball joint mechanism, which achieves great control performance and three degrees of freedom. However, it uses rigid motors that makes the link not compliant to the high back drivability. And it uses encoders for feedback, which adds bulkiness. Other methods have been used, such as pneumatic artificial muscles. However, they were not able to achieve feedback control due to the absence of sensor data from those types of actuators. Taking inspiration from the human shoulder, we propose a compact and lightweight system with a ball and socket joint that is connected via tendons to soft and compliant artificial muscles, also called hazel actuators. We eliminate the need of external sensors thanks to our self-sensing capabilities of the actuators. This freedom ensures we have no limitation on the mechanical joint design. Let's now look at how the robot works. On the left, you can see the front view, and on the right, the side view, where you can see one pair of antagonistic hazels actuating the first degree of freedom. The second pair, as highlighted on the right, actuates the perpendicular direction, and together we have two degrees of freedom. Let's now continue with our actuator design. Our artificial muscles are composed of five actuation pouches, which contract when a high voltage is applied. Traditional hazels use the same electrode for sensing. However, in this paper, we use a sixth pouch where we add two low voltage sensing electrodes on top to improve the self-sensing capabilities. We will follow up with a further study that will dive deeper into the advantages of this design. Depending on the displacement of the actuator, the capacity of the sensing electrodes changes. We measure the voltage across them, which uses a self-sensing signal in our control architecture. Thanks to our new hazel design, we receive four high-quality, low-voltage sensing signals of the four hazel actuators. However, those signals are in a tendon space, meaning one signal per linear movement, but we need to map them to the task space, that is the joint angles, to compare them to the reference position. To do this, we use a regression model that outputs the estimated joint angles in the task space. Now we can close the loop and feed the error into a PID controller, which in turn outputs the commanded voltages to control the hazels. We train our estimation model with data provided by a motion capture system. We can also feed the ground truth data into the loop as a benchmark for our self-sensing feedback control. We validated our approach using experiments with an attached gripper. As you can see in the experimental setup, we used four high voltage amplifiers to control the hazels. The function generator created a low voltage sensing signal at 20 kHz, and our sensing circuits measured the voltage drop over the sensing electrodes which we used as feedback signal. Here you can see the results of the trajectory tracking of both the motion capture and the self-sensing control. Although we are able to track the trajectory with self-sensing, the performance is worse than the benchmark, primarily due to the estimation model's limitations in handling noisy self-sensing data. Here, you can see the same trajectory, but now in the tendon space. You can see the reference, true, and estimated hazel displacement of all four actors. Each row corresponds to one antagonistic configuration. Our study presents several limitations that open opportunities for future work. 
one could use a more sophisticated estimation model in the future to improve the performance in different environments outside the lab. Moreover, we are currently limited to achieving high torque outputs due to the constraints of the hazel actor. A solution would be to stack multiple hazels on top of each other. Finally, one could also implement the third degree of freedom to more closely resemble the human shoulder. In conclusion, we introduced a bio-inspired antagonistic robotic shoulder with two degrees of freedom using self-sensing piano hazel actuators. This design eliminates the need for external sensors and thereby offers a more compact and compliant structure.